Shalom everybody, Shalom Shalom, Akiva Gersh here. I hope you're doing well from Vegan Rabbi. For those of you who are watching this on my Vegan Rabbi page, this is part of the Tikkun Klali Light of the Infinite Festival. So welcome. If you're watching it on the, the website, Shalom, whether it's live or recorded, Shalom from Israel. These are obviously very, very intense times, challenging times, and at the same time, beautiful and inspiring uh, and Gu'uladik times, really. Um, huge sparks, powerful sparks, big sparks uh, of redemption flying through the air, flying through our lives and flying through a reality right now. And so it's a real honor to be part of this festival, the Tikkun Klali Festival. Um, and would like to just share a few thoughts uh, and also a couple of songs because really on the deepest level, I think Tikkun Klali, uh, Tikkun Klali is, is, is a song we, we, and we learned that these are, are, are 10 powerful chapters of Tehillim of Psalms and their songs, right? These are songs of longing, songs of redemption, songs of, of yearning for, for fixing the brokenness in, in our world. And we know at the core of the Jewish tradition is this desire, is this desire to, to fix the world, tikkun olam. And we learn from our, our mystical tradition that everything that we're doing in this world, every mitzvah that we were, that we were given, every prat of halacha, every, every detail of, 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 of every Jewish law, why do we have it? Why do we have such a, 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 an enormous uh, amount of, 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 of obligations and requirements, mitzvot, halachot, because there's a lot to fix in this world. And all that we do and everything that we do and anything that we do that's in line with our holy tradition, with our holy Torah, is, is bringing more and more fixing into the world, more and more healing into the world. And there's so much to be healed in this world, as we know, throughout the generations, throughout the centuries and thousands of years. And especially right now, right, there's a lot of brokenness in, in the wake of what happened on October 7th and since. And at the same time, there's a lot of healing happening and there's a lot of, of deep fixing because there was a lot of brokenness before October 7th. And um, we're seeing these two energies really kind of swirl around together and it's really, really emotionally challenging for a lot of people, specifically in, uh, in Israel, but for, for, for Jews all over the world with the insane rise of anti-Semitism and, and, and the the knowing of what a catastrophe it was that took place and and in a son as we say in hebrew uh, an absolute uh, disaster what happened to our people on october 7th and so we're we're, we're carrying around a lot of this brokenness a lot a lot of this sadness a lot of this deep deep pain and again at the same time at the same time simultaneously we are we are we are in awe of, of the of the unity that has um, come out of this time, the way that our nation is coming together like never before that I've ever seen, uh, especially after this past year of incredible division religiously and politically, um, really within moments, within moments, you know, I think before October 7th, if people ask, how are we ever going to get out of this place that we're in of such divide and such division, such hate, sinat chinam, Right, basis hatred. I mean, we never ever wanted something like this, right? If we could rewrite history, we would take this out. Absolutely, the pain and the suffering and the, and, and, and the death and, and the, all the other things that I don't, I don't even want to mention right now. The horrors. Um, obviously, if we could change history, we would. But we also have to recognize, you know, the, the, the light that is shining out of the brokenness the light that is shining out of the brokenness. And we're just about to come to Hanukkah. And this is, you know, the light of, the, uh, of infinite festival. It's, it's, it's the Orient Sof. The Orient Sof doesn't go anywhere, no matter how dark it gets. And sometimes the darker it gets, the, the, the brighter it shines, the more we can see it. And we're two nights away from Hanukkah. And we know that Hanukkah comes at the darkest time of the year, exactly when we need that light. And this is one of the darkest chapters of Jewish history, just when we need this light. 
right and uh and and, and to, to focus on on on, 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 the, on the theme of this festival of the light of infinite festival that's happening right now tikkun akhlali right the, the 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 overall fixing right just maybe just to give I, i'm sure lots of people are talking about this i don't want to say what what many other people have said but just in case someone's seeing only this and they don't know what tikkun akhlali is it's 10 of the 150 psalms from the book of psalms that rabbi nachman um knew was this this great fixing for all things a, a, a spiritual remedy for for all the brokenness that a person a nation a world could ever experience and there was this tradition that there were these 10 specific psalms that could be this general fixing but people don't know which one the tradition got lost and, and rabbi nachman brought that back to the world and it's a very powerful tool for spiritual fixing, for spiritual alignment, realignment, coming back to the way, coming back to the path. Um, you know, Bukh Hashem, when I first became religious uh, about 25 years ago, one of the, I, I encountered Rabbi Nachman right away, right at the beginning, um, through Rabbi Shlomo Kalibach, and um, who taught a lot of Rabbi Nachman teachings. And with that came this awareness of, of, the, of the Tikkun Klali, and the, the immense power uh, and spiritual depth that it had and the light that it had inside. And so, Bukh Hashem, I've merited to say it many, many, many times in America, in Israel, and in Uman, and Rosh Hashanah many times, thank God. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very special prayer, a uh, set of prayers, right? It's, it's, it's 10 Psalms, but we know that, they're, that, 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 that the book of Psalms are just this incredible, mix of of prayers and love songs for god the yearning of the heart the yearning of the soul to be closer to god to fix our broken ways and to just let our light shine let our infinite light shine right why is all of our infinite lights not shining because of our brokenness because of the things that we've unfortunately done in our in our war in, in our lives unfortunately not that we should be held down by those things we shouldn't be imprisoned by those things but but they are there and, and, they, and, they, and they do get us stuck and they, and they do block out light, God forbid, unfortunately. But when we do the fixing, right? Rabbi Nachman said, you know, doing tshuva doesn't have to be a hard thing. Does, uh, doing repentance, repenting for our wrongdoings, wrongdoings doesn't have to be hard. It actually could be so easy, especially if we do it right away. As soon as we mess up, right away, literally right away. We often think, oh, but I can't. I mean, how can I be, how can I mess up one second and be sorry the next and, and have it be real? No, it could be real. We absolutely could do that. We can mess up and five seconds later, three seconds later, one second later, feel absolutely, I can't believe I did that. I want to repent. I want to come back. I want to, I want to, I want to make, I want to make amends for what I just did. We absolutely can do that. Rabbi Nachman taught us that. And, and, and the Tikkun Klali is part of that toolbox that we have. And someone asked, can a, would, it, would it benefit a non-Jew to recite it? I believe so. The book of Psalms was a gift to humanity from King David, 150 love songs to God, 150 songs that are filled with so many yearnings uh, to be the best that we can be. Right? They're filled with all kinds of praise and love for God and yearning to be close to God and recognizing our fallings and our, and our failings and uh, everything all together. It's an incredible, incredible collection of, of prayers and of verses and words and, and songs. Um, so yeah, Tikkun Klali is, is very powerful for the nations, for the nations, for the nation of Israel, for the people of Israel, but also for the world. And I think the more that people use it, the more uh, this world will, will benefit. So, you know, this along the, the, the lines of, uh, you know, this set of 10 Psalms being a, a collection of songs um, along those lines. So I want to I want to sing you a song that came to me many many years ago, using one of the verses uh, from Tikkun Klali. You know, after saying this verse over and over again, it just like really really hit me like how beautiful these words are. So this comes from the fourth Psalm in Tikkun Klali. It's it's chapter forty two in Tehillim in uh, the Book of Psalms. And it uses the the first, uh, I'm sorry, the second and the third line of chapter 42 in the book of Psalms, again, part of uh, Tikkun Kali. So I'm going to sing this song for you that came to me many years ago. I uh, hope you, uh, whatever, connect to it. So, uh, so here we go. Okay, hopefully you can hear my guitar and my voice all okay, through this.
kemahim, ke nafshi taog elecha elokim. Kaal taog alafi kemahim, ke nafshi taog elecha elokim. Tzama nafshi lelokim, lekel chai. Tzama nafshi lelokim, lekel chai. So too my soul thirsts for you, God. My soul is thirsty for God, for the living God. Uh, when will I come to see the countenance of God? Gorgeous, beautiful words written by King David thousands of years ago that we say and we sing today. And I think when we sing the words of Tikkun Klali, it brings these words to a whole other level. Um, you know, we learned that song is, is a very, very powerful um, medium through which to connect to God, to the divine, right? Specifically in the Hasidic tradition, song is a very, very important and a very, very powerful tool for, for, for reaching out to God, for, for expressing the yearning of the soul and to connecting, right? Like words, you know, are very important. Learning Torah, very, very important. Saying words are very, very important, but when we sing, and even, maybe even especially when we go beyond the words and we sing the melody, the, as we call it in Hebrew, the nigun, we, we get to a very, very high place. And, and, and so Tikkun Kalali is already on a very, very high place. And we mix that together with song. I think it brings us uh, really even higher. I want to just take a moment to, you know, connect these ideas, the idea of, of prayer um, to other teachings in the, in the Jewish tradition. You know, the Jewish tradition teaches that 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 the that the greatest 
weapon the Jewish people have is the mouth, right? Why? Because it's what we use to, to pray. The prayer is a tool, it's a weapon, so to speak, that we have, right? In order to change the world, better the world, improve the world. Right? Rabbi Nachman uh, himself says, I was just learning this last night actually with friends, relearning it. We've learned this teaching many, many times that the tool of the, of, of the Mashiach, of the Messiah is prayer. Right? And through prayer, the world will be transformed. The world can be transformed. And that's why people, very, very holy people, we call tzaddikim, they reach the level of such purification, of such holiness, that they are able to, through their prayers, literally change reality. Because their prayer, they themselves are so nullified to, to God, to the one, to, to the oneness of all, that their prayer is so crystal clear and pure that their prayers are able to be answered because their desires are so in line with the divine. Right? Does that make sense? You guys get that? Right? So the, the power of prayer, which is really the driving force behind Tikkun Kali, right? that when we say these certain Pirkei Tehillim, these, these chapters of Tehillim, right? we have the power to change the world. We have the power to change ourselves. We have the power to transform, to go beyond, to elevate ourselves, even if we messed up in the past, even if we messed up yesterday, even if we messed up just a few seconds ago. I have the power right now, in this moment that I'm living right now, to, to fix anything and everything. And Rabbi Nachman taught us that. Rabbi Nachman taught us that belief, right? And, and then Tikkun Akhladi is the tool to really express that belief, that we have the power to not you know, give up on ourselves and not to be, you know, brought down and drawn down by our past mistakes. No, you know, Rabbi Nachman teaches, teaches that there's two Yetzirahs, there's two evil inclinations. The first one brings us, God forbid, unfortunately, to do sins, to do things we shouldn't do. But the second one keeps us down, all feeling bad for ourselves that we did it and not getting up and starting all over again, right? And, and, and giving, our, our, giving our, our, ourselves a chance to, to, to make amends and to, and to fix. Right? Rabbi Nachman was the master of starting all over again. He said every single day I start over again many, many times. And he taught his students and, and the rest of us to do the same. I want to just, you know, uh, connect this idea to also one of the main uh, ideas of, of my vegan rabbi page is that our mouths can literally change the world and are an important and necessary tool in changing the world. We're talking about prayer, but, but on, on my vegan rabbi page, we talk about what we eat. Right, prayer it comes out of our mouths. What words? What words come out of our mouth? Right, and, and with what thoughts and with what heart space? But what we put in our mouth also has a tremendous impact on ourselves, our well-being, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Right, and of course, the well-being of the entire world, the animals, God's creations, God's creation, nature, ecosystems everywhere, all around the world. So, what we choose to eat has such a tremendous impact. Tremendous, especially in our day and age. What we eat literally makes or breaks the world. What we eat every single day, the food choices we make every single day are either bringing broken, more brokenness, God forbid, to the world or more fixing to the world. Either we're taking part in the brokenness of the, of the animal agriculture industry or we're not, right? It, 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 it's that simple. The foods I'm buying, are they supporting the suffering of animals? The foods I'm putting in my mouth, are they... Are they, are they helping me to be stronger and more healthy the way the Torah says we should be? Right? It's a myth from the Torah to take care of our bodies because our bodies are a gift from God and our bodies hold our soul, allowing our souls to express itself in this world. God, you know, God gave us a special role in this creation, gave us responsibility. Are we fulfilling that responsibility? And, and of all the things that we do in our modern day lives, the one thing that has the greatest impact on so many levels of life and reality is, is, is what we eat, the food choices we make every single day. So I just wanna share that with you as well when we're talking about like the great fixing, right? Prayer is obviously a huge part, Tikkun Cloud is a huge part, but we must also make better decisions. We must also make lifestyle choices, and in this case, food choices that are in line with Jewish teachings, Jewish laws, Jewish values that go back thousands of years. Right? Our ancestors never could have imagined the modern animal industry, the meat and dairy and egg industry and fish industry. They never could have imagined it and all the horrors that are involved with it. Right? The pain and suffering to animals every single day, every single day of their lives. They're forced to be born, they're forced to suffer their whole lives, and they're forced to be killed. That's in line with Jewish teachings? I don't think so. 
And there's many, many teachings to back up that statement of mine, from Jewish law, from the Torah, from the Talmud, from uh, Chassidut to Kabbalah. It's it's filled. Check if if you don't believe me, check out my my page on Facebook or Instagram. I share a ton of these teachings lately. The last two months, I've been sharing about the war. But go further back, and you'll see. Or reach out to me. I'd be happy to share these with you. I've been collecting these sources for about 20 years now. Let's wrap up uh, with one more song, and we're going to sing the last of uh, of the ten psalms that comprises Tikkun Klali. All right, it's the last of all the psalms. It's Psalm 150. We're going to use a nigun from Rabbi Shlomo Kralibach, and it's just so powerful, right? To look at the last of all the the psalms. There's 150 psalms. This is Psalm 150. And of course, it was included in Tikkun Klali, because really, when we see the 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 words of 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 Psalm 150, it's talking about praising God, right? To, dancing in front of God, blowing a shofar to to praise God, right? And using all these instruments, flutes and lyres and cymbals and and drums, right, to praise God. We're using music. We're using sound. We're using song. We're using instruments to praise God, right? And this, on, 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 on a very real level, is the highest form of expression of praise for God. And I think that's why it's the very, very last of all the Psalms. We're hitting the peak, the peak expression of love for God, of praise for God, desire to, and longing to be close to God. Through what? Through song, through music, through dancing. Right? Hallelujah, betofu machol. Praise God with drums and dance. Right? That might not sound like a very typical Jewish thing, but it is. King David talked about it. Right? We have uh, stories in the, in, the, in, the, in the Tanakh, in the Bible, where King David is dancing before God. So let's sing this song with a melody from Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach, and with this we'll, we'll round up the sharing as part of this amazing festival uh, focused on uh, Tikkun Klali through the light of, uh, of infinite. Uh, and thank you, Eris, so much for inviting me. So here we go, my friends. <laughs> I'll sing the nigun, the melody, one time through, at least the first part, and then we'll get into the words. Maybe get a little lower. Like, Psalm 150, my friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pikachu. Let's just wrap up by, by, by saying those last words of Psalm 150 
And the last words, the last line of the entire book of Psalms. Once again, Kol hallelujah, hallelujah. Every living soul, every soul will praise God, hallelujah. Right, so it's a powerful way to end this very, very powerful book of Psalms and specifically Tikkun Klali, this, these 10 specifically selected Psalms to be this general spiritual fixing for all people at all times in all different life circumstances and situations. And this idea that Kala Neshama Tehalia, that every living soul will praise God, this is all creation. There will come a day, please God, soon that we see it in our days that all of creation will, will praise God together. Human life, animal life, nature, everything together. Call in a Shema to Hallelujah. Right? And that's at least all the humans. And from there, we'll, we'll go to the rest of creation. I sometimes think the rest of creation is already there. It's those humans that, that are falling way behind, that we need to catch up to, to the animals and to creation. They're already praising God left and right every single day. But uh, many people uh, mention and note that the word in Hebrew for soul, nishama, is the same word, the same letters as breath in Hebrew, nish, nishima. So it's really this idea of, of every breath we're praising God, that we're going towards the point that we can see God so clearly every single day of our lives and every single moment. It's a high ideal. I know we're not yet there. We can't even imagine it. But please God, one day we're going to get there. We're supposed to get there. We're meant to get there. We will get there. And then in that moment, when we do get there, every single moment, every breath we take, we'll just be like, Praise God, praise God, thank you God. Just constantly, constantly praising God. And Rabbi Nachman says that that's the, that's the essential uh, idea of Chanukah. Chanukah is Yemei Hoda'a. Hoda'ya, right? Uh, Yemei Hoda'a, which is like these days of praise and, 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 and thanks, gratitude to God. Right? We say Hallel all eight days of, of, of Chanukah. We're just praising God for the miracles that were then and the miracles that are still now. Right? By Yemei Mahim, Right, but in those days at this time, right, those miracles, that godliness is still present, available there in our lives today, just like it was back then. Maybe today we have to dig a little bit deeper, but when we open up our hearts and we open up our souls and when we sing and when we praise God, right, especially the the the, the verses of of the Book of Psalms and especially the Tikkun Klali, our hearts and our souls are so open that we can experience that orient self, that infinite light, right? that presence of God, and that inspires us to praise God and to thank God. And I'll just say the opposite is true as well. When we, Even if we don't feel it, even if we don't quote unquote see it, when we open up our hearts and we praise God, we thank God for all that there is, all that we have, that allows us to be elevated and, and, and see and sense and feel that infinite light in the world, in our lives, uh, in our lives as well. So really just want to end with a blessing for all of you. Um, wherever you are in your life, wherever you are in the world, whatever situation, know that there is always a tikkun, there's always a repair, there's no such thing as giving up, there's no such thing as too late, too much, um, too wrong, too anything. Rabbi Nachman taught us that we can always get up, we can always brush ourselves off, we can always return, we can always refine the way, and we need to believe in ourselves and believe in that in order to one day, both on a personal level, a national level, and a global level, reach the, the ultimate and final tikkun, the ultimate and final fixing that this world is meant to reach, right? which is tikkun alam, the fixing of the world, and please God, the Mashiach, the coming of the Messiah, and the redemption for all the world, please God, we should experience it soon in our days. Blessings to everybody. Thank you so much for being here. All the best. Shalom, and many blessings from the land of Israel.